Okay, so we have, <clears throat> excuse me, another heat problem that we're going to look at here today. This one reads a 2.5 times 10 to the third gram sample of copper, and our copper constant is given, a specific heat capacity, has an initial temperature of 6.5 degrees Celsius. If 75,100 joules of heat are added to this, what would the final temperature be? Now, this is one of those questions, what would the final temperature be? Ooh, let's get this pencil working here. And it's, there we go. Okay, what would the final temperature be? So the final temperature, um, now this is one of those ones where you have two options, and I've showed you some of these in my previous, I showed you one of these in my previous problems, where you're looking for either the initial or the final temperature, and in that instance, I found delta T first, Then I substituted in my value for delta T, and I solved for temperature final or temperature initial, whichever one I was looking for. This instance here, I'm just going to substitute the value directly into the equation, sub the value in directly, and I'll show you what I mean when I say that. <clears throat> okay, so we still write down our formula. Formula hasn't changed. We've been working on this formula for a few problems now, and you can check my you can check my videos. I have a few of these um, videos solving heat problems, and we're going to continue to identify each variable. So 2.5 times 10 to the third grams. Grams is mass. So we write this in and I'm going to write this in ordinary notation. And it is given in our problem in scientific notation. So that would be 2,500 grams. Can we move our decimal three places? Um, <clears throat> excuse me. There is our constant for specific heat capacity. And we write that in. The initial temperature is 6.5. Now here's what we know. Temperature final minus temperature initial. The heat formula uses the delta T variable. you got to remember what delta T stands for. Delta, delta T, excuse me, is temperature final minus temperature initial. So we're asked, we are asked for this variable right here and we are given this one. Okay, keep that in mind. So we'll go back. Final temperature is going to be X. Okay, and the reason for that is this is what would the final temperature be. That is what we're looking for and we're solving for our unknown. Our unknown here is X, but we know we are given our initial temperature. It is 6.5 degrees Celsius. We know that. Okay, we know that it is given in the equation, in the, in the original problem. And we're looking for one more piece of information here. It is here, 75,100 joules. 75,100 joules of heat energy. Okay, now, we're going to rewrite. I'm going to do this in two little steps here, just so I can show you again. Okay, there is our formula. You know what delta T represents. I'm going to write it out again just to see if this will help you. MC, you know that delta T is temperature final minus temperature initial. That's what delta T stands for, represents. Okay, let's keep going. Q. What are we at here? 75,100 joules. Oops, equals. And our mass is 2,500 grams. Our specific heat capacity, decimal 390 joules, grams, degrees Celsius. 
here's the tricky part. Final temperature, X, we're plugging in what we know, what we have, 6.5 degrees Celsius. Very important, I've been stressing this all the way through these, these heat problems. You always use your units, and uh, this is another example of why you should, as we start working our way through this problem, and canceling units. So I'm going to do some rewriting here, so 75,100 joules. Okay, we're going to solve. We're going to multiply 2,500 grams times decimal 390 joules over grams degrees Celsius. When we do this, we end up with our numeral is 975. Our unit is joules over grams degrees Celsius because our grams cancel. And we're going to just rewrite this one more time and we'll solve this in our next line so we'll rewrite again nothing happening over here yet this is already as simplified the left side of this equation is as simplified as we can get <clears throat> until we're solving for our unknown now here's what we have to do here 975 we're going to take that and we're going to multiply it by x and then we're going to take 975 joules degrees Celsius, and we're going to multiply it by 6.5. Okay, and that's using our mathematical rules. So we end up with 975 joules degrees Celsius. X subtract, and when you multiply 975 times 6.5, you have... 6,337.5 joules because our Celsius is canceled when we multiply the latter. Okay, now we're looking at this and we're going to simplify. We have this unit here, joules over degrees Celsius X. We have joules here and we have joules here so simplify means we're going to collect like terms before we solve for our unknown and what that means is we're going to add we want to get isolate the x variable so in order to isolate this variable we're going to add 6,337 6, excuse me 0.5 joules to this side of the equation and of course what we do to one side we have to do the other. So this is what it's going to look like. I'm going to do this out in, in its complete form here, just so you can see. Quite often in class, I might not show this, but I'm just going to do this so that you can pause it and look back at it later to see if it makes any sense. If it doesn't, feel free to ask questions. Nine, seven, five joules degrees Celsius X, 6337.5 joules plus 6337.5 joules. Okay, now we're going to add these two together. We have like terms here, joules. These are going to basically give us zero. We have Subtract, this is like saying add the opposite. <clears throat> so we have minus 6,337.5 joules, and we have plus 6,307.5 joules. This is going to give us zero. Okay, so I'll say they cancel each other out, but they are going to give us a net value of zero. When we add 75,100 and 6,337, it gives us. 8,001, or I'm sorry, 81,000, got this calculator here, 437.5 joules, like terms, and we are getting there, 975 joules, degrees Celsius, oh, I forgot to carry my X down here, sorry, this X here, should be there, X. <coughs> We've isolated our variable, and now we can solve for our 
unknown x and remember what that x represents temperature final final temperature and 975 joules degrees Celsius okay all of this will cancel right these units all cancel joules degrees Celsius we are left with X which is our final temperature right from the get-go okay right from here this final temperature is this X and we've solved for X now look here we have a joules here and a joules here and we are left with a unit expressed in degrees Celsius which is what we want 975 into 81437.5 gives us a temperature of 83.5 degrees Celsius we're looking at two significant digits for our final answer I'm just going to do this over here we have we have one two we're going to look this is a five again I've mentioned this in one of my previous videos that's a five this is an odd number the number that we are rounding so in that instance we would bump the three up to a four do this over here so using the proper number of significant digits our final temperature would be 84 degrees Celsius okay uh, hopefully that was clear for you and if there are any questions feel free and if not I hope this helped and thank you and have a great day